Hey what is up guys and welcome back to another video in the studio and today we're talking about this monitor right here which is the Acer XB321HK and this is a 4K monitor, it's 32 inches, it's IPS, 60Hz refresh rate and it's got G-Sync technology and normally a 4K monitor of this screen size I would say is probably more of a professional monitor for someone that wants to do photo editing, video editing, cam, anything really like that but this is very much a gaming monitor that can do all sorts of other things. So is that a recipe that works or is this a monitor that maybe should be left on the shelf? Well, it all starts with the design language which is very similar to the rest of the Acer Predator range. You'll find a matte black finish with a few red accents used throughout. And it's definitely a very aggressive design which I personally, I wouldn't say I'm a massive fan of but I really don't mind. I think the main problem though that this is a monitor that could just as easily be used for professionals that maybe do a bit of gaming on the side, whereas I think the design language is going to put them off a little bit because I wouldn't really say this is going to suit an office or somewhere like that very well and if you're someone that does have a lot of horsepower in your PC and you occasionally want to use that for games, you're probably not going to want a monitor that really does scream gaming. That aside though, as soon as we move around to the back of the monitor, you'll find all the ports really that you need. The main one being DisplayPort, but we also do have an HDMI. And this is another problem, as I really, really would have liked to see HDMI 2.0 here. For me, this could well be a deal breaker, as if I want to plug in something like an Xbox One S, I can't play my games upscaled at 4K, and I can't view certain things that I would be able to view if we had HDCP 2.2 as part of the HDMI 2.0 standard. If that sounds a little bit complicated, basically you can't play 4K Blu-rays on this monitor, which is a shame, as because someone like me that would use this for that exact purpose, it means that I can't do that, and it is a shame. But for most people, probably not going to be that much of an issue. Moving around to the front of the monitor though, you'll find that the bezels are very thin throughout. They're definitely not the thinnest and they, I think they are thicker than the smaller monitors in the Acer Predator range, but again, not really a big deal. The stand itself has a wide array of adjustments, but not as wide as I would like. We've only really got tilt and then height adjust. I would definitely like to see swivel, pivot, I definitely could take it or leave it here, it's a very big behemoth of a monitor so I can see why they haven't included that but swivel really would have been nice. And it is worth noting as you've probably already noticed that this particular monitor has a small amount of damage on the front whereby a little bit of the Predator logo has been peeled away. But this is a review sample that gets thrown around uh, to all the different publications and or events so what's probably happened is that someone's just picked it at an event or something silly like that. I wouldn't worry about it. Moving on towards the on-screen display of the monitor though, you'll find that the buttons on the bottom right hand side do a decent enough job of getting around the menu system. They're physical, which I do like, but I definitely found myself pressing the wrong button on a few occasions as it's not necessarily that clear how you need to control all of the different features. Once you've sort of worked it out, it's not too much of a problem, but one thing that does bug me, and at least I can't seem to find an option if it is there, but I really don't think it is, is there's no auto select. So if you plug in a DisplayPort monitor and then you want to plug in something like an Amazon Fire TV box or something like that on the HDMI socket, it won't automatically switch, which is quite annoying and you then have to do it manually. So that's it for the design and the on-screen display, but what about the core image quality? Well, I think we have to first talk about the form factor, as 32 inches with 4K is probably ideal in my opinion. Maybe slightly on the large side if we've got a smaller desk, and every single desk I've tested this on I have had to push the monitor all the way back as far as it would go, as otherwise it's just a little bit too in your face. And personally, I do prefer an ultra wide, as I find that having the extra width is more useful than having a monitor that's quite high. But the main benefits of a 32 inch 4K monitor is that we don't have to worry quite so much about scaling. I still do use it, I set it to 125%, but if you do want to use it without, I think you can just about get away with it, but everything is going to be a little bit small. But because it's 16 by 9, all your games are going to natively support it as long as they're made in the last 20 years or so. And of course, Netflix and YouTube and things like that are all in 16 by 9. So on that front, you can pretty much watch everything you want to watch without black bars, with the exception of a few films that are in 21 by 9. But overall, it does make for an experience that is really nice, as everything is still pin sharp, 
Not as sharp as it would be on a 27 inch monitor, but personally I would definitely go for this form factor if I was gonna buy a 4K monitor every single time. I really do think that it makes more sense as you have extra screen real estate and as well as that extra sharpness. But the IPS panel on this particular monitor is really good. I mean, if you are doing any image work at all, everything looks stellar. And even if you're not, everything still looks really good, whether it's games, just some video, doesn't really matter what you're doing. An IPS panel gives you nice, rich colors, and this is definitely one of the best ones I've seen. In terms of backlight bleed, there's nothing really I've noticed but it's definitely worth noting I never sit in the dark and use monitors like this anyway, so it's probably not an issue that would affect me anyway. And if you are going to be doing anything specific like video editing, then of course having that 4K monitor means you can actually view your content in native 4K. And as long as you're doing stuff like that, it is brilliant. But while all that stuff is all well and good, this is a gaming monitor, so realistically it's gonna live or die by its gaming performance. And the usual stuff applies. You're gonna need a decent graphics card to get this to work. Something like an R9 Fury, obviously not. But realistically, in all seriousness, probably you're looking at anything from a GTX 980 and up. So a 1070 works really well. It does depend on the game. I mean, I played a lot of Civilization VI on this monitor and I was getting a constant 60 FPS and it was pure bliss. It really, really was. Having G-Sync, of course, is really gonna help if you don't have quite such a powerful card. And this is where if you have a weaker graphics card but you only play games like Civilization, a G-Sync monitor really does come into its own. But if you want to play something a little bit more demanding, maybe like Gears of War 4, unfortunately I couldn't actually get G-Sync working for this game. I know people said they have got it working, but try as I might I couldn't get it working. But fortunately I was able to use the stellar settings in that game to downscale slightly to around about 95% of the 4K resolution, still get a constant 60 FPS, and it's really, really amazing to play Gears that's that immersive, that sharp, and with that colour. Uh, well, that level colour accuracy. It's more the rich, vibrant colours that really make the game pop. Something that isn't quite such a strength, of course, on this monitor is going to be competitive games. Something like Dota, not a problem whatsoever. 60 hertz for me is all is more than I need, really, on a monitor like this. I know there are definitely people that would swear by having a 120 or 144 or above hertz monitor for something like that. Me, personally, not such a big deal. But something like Counter-Strike GO, while this does do a valiant job, is definitely not what the most die-hard players are going to be doing. Totally dubbed, probably not going to be for you. But overall, I think gaming performance is actually really good on this monitor. It's not a general use monitor in the sense that a 165Hz IPS 1440p monitor is going to be. Personally, I would still rather buy one of those, as I find that it doesn't matter what you throw at it, it's going to do it and everything is stellar and super, super smooth. As someone that plays a lot of first-person shooters, that's probably the reason I would maybe steer away from it. But this is no doubt the best 4K monitor I have used so far, full stop. And of course, it's the best 4K monitor I've used so far for gaming. Games are incredibly hard to run in 4K and having G-Sync technology is gonna make your life that much easier because you're not going to have to worry about getting a constant 60 FPS. You can aim for around about the 45 and above mark and in most games, you're gonna have a great experience. And so with that, it's the end of the review. This wins the top purchase award as it's definitely got pretty much everything covered. Image quality is great, the G-Sync technology module makes it for a super smooth experience and price wise for a 32 inch 4K monitor, I don't actually think it's too bad. Yes, it's very expensive, but compared to some of its competition, it's definitely uh, more in line with what you would expect. But the thing that stops it grabbing that Editor's Choice Award, for me, is the fact that it doesn't have Swivel and it doesn't have HDMI 2.0. Put those two things in the monitor and I definitely would have been more sold. And of course, if you're someone that doesn't like the design, well, there's not really anything you can do about that either. But if you like this video, please like it. If you haven't, you know what to do. Subscribe for more videos and more monitor reviews. I'll leave the link to this product down in the description below as always. And if you have any comments, leave them down below. A massive thank you to you guys for watching, to Acer, almost forgot their name man, that would have been bad. A massive thank you to Acer for shipping out this review sample, appreciate it as always. And a massive thank you to Corsair for sponsoring this channel. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. 
If you want to check out some more videos, you'll find the links scattered around this page. This is of course filler content, that means there wasn't any funny blooper or anything like that that I could play at the end of this video, so you've got me talking instead. If you want to shut me up, hit one of the links, or you can just hit the X button, but don't do that. <laughs>